Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today I want to show a very high memory game that I recently played. This was the grand finals game uh, of my Battle Cup, and I just want to go through over my entire thought process of every step of the way throughout this game so you guys can get inside of the head of a high memory player. I'm currently 10,000 MMR. I don't know if a lot of you guys even know that. I'm ranked 16, um, I'm 10,000 MMR, and yeah, I've been uh, having a lot of success in Dota as of late, and I want to share that knowledge with you guys, so let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like, literally, with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but, like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. All right, so I'm going to spend a quick minute, only a minute, on the drafting phase of this game. Then I will shift over to the actual match. You'll notice we went for a Death Prophet first pick here. So yeah, I went 22 and 4 on a first pick hero, but this is pretty standard. It's not that surprising. Death Prophet is considered to be busted by basically every single pro player in the world right now. And the reason why is she has a great laning stage and can own towers in the matter of a second. Like, this is like maybe one of the best, if not the best, tower taking hero in the early game. But a big question I've been receiving that I will be answering in today's video is what do you do after you take the safe lane tower and then the mid tower? I've had multiple people ask me this now, like literally like four people ask me the same question, which always means that it must be some sort of prevalent question. So yeah, what do you do after you take the towers? Because it's pretty simple to understand how to play Death Prof in the, in the early game. You know, obviously some people still have trash mechanics, but the, the concept is like shoving the lane, and then take the tower and then make your way towards mid when you have your next exo and then take that tower it's <laughs> bro right, let's get into it all right so the main thing i'm going to be covering here is the mid game if you want to know about death prophet's laning stage i will make a laning stage guide for this hero literally on the website on this exact game so i'm going to be covering the mid to late game in this video and then we'll you know just kind of talking about more so the map movements and how to team fight so all right getting into the mid game we're 10 minutes in here and you'll notice that i don't really want to exo for this tower one thing you have to determine is whether or not you need the exo so that might sound a little bit weird it's like speed why not just use it usually i actually would recommend just using it if the tower is 50 percent hp or above honestly nine times out of ten just use the exo get the tower and then be able to stay in your lane and flash farm. You'll notice that after I take this tower, I'm going to make the same play basically every single game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just shove in the top lane as far as humanly possible. There's a fight going on bottom. There's a mid tower that's actually getting pressured, which I think I end up TPing to in a moment here. I'll talk about why, uh, but I push this all the way in and then I look to TP. Oh no, do I get ganked here? No, okay. So I get kicked out. I see that the coddle's pushing in mid. And what I need to think about now is where is my next farm and how do I take this mid tower? Because taking mid tower isn't that straightforward. I can get arena I can get rolled on by Pango, I can get Coddle Blasted. I mean, look at the game right now. We're currently 2k gold behind. We are like way behind, right? And so how do I approach this? How do we go about this? Well, the main way is by just kind of waiting, right? I'm not gonna lie. Like I need to wait for teammates to come because in pubs, especially for you guys, you're not going to just be able to tell people, hey, come mid, come take this tower, and they're going to do it right away. It's not it's not how it goes, right? And so instead, what you want to do is just defend your own mid tower. DP is very good at this. You're very, very tanky. So if you get dove, you can get off your spirit siphons, your silence, often live. And you can see, I, I really want to put an emphasis on taking or defending the most important tower of the game, which is the mid tower. When I see this coddle sieging my mid tower, I really, really want to put an emphasis on not letting him have it. And so you notice I'm now going to shift over to mid. The only reason why I TP'd out of top though, by the way, like if my void wasn't top, I would have just stayed top. And the way I would try to approach mid is from the left. Because if you come from the left, you can get behind the enemy team. You can pop your exo and dive a hero. It's really, really useful. That's why I go the wind lace and the face boots completely doubling down on these stat based items. I think people just have the wrong idea behind death profit most games. They'll go like hood brown boots into BKB. I hate those builds so much, man. I think they're so garbage. And the reason why I think they're garbage, it's not that I don't like BKB rush. I like BKB rush. Look at the item I'm buying. <laughs> I just don't like when people don't buy a wand and don't buy a wind lace. And then sometimes don't buy phase boots. Like, yeah, some games you can buy bots and some games you can buy treads. That's another another question. This game, I really wanted the uh, phase boots. The reason why is I'm against minus armor from 
Pango, his Lucky Shot and Corrosion. I'm against a Deso Wraith King at some point in the game. And so I really needed to, you know, deal with my potential armor problems that DP has. So I pick up a phase boost. And they're just good at chasing people. But you'll see immediately I'm going to look to Exo the mid tower. Uh, essentially, this does two things, okay? It takes the mid tower and it brings people mid. So a lot of the time people are like, speed, my safe leaner is always feeding. I don't know what to do. This is like the perfect solution to that, right? This is the perfect solution. If your safe laner is feeding and dying in their lane all the time, and you're a mid lane or off lane player, you need to think about how much pressure you're putting on the map away from them, right? Away from them. You don't realize how much impact their decisions have until you actually start looking at enough replays. Because if you don't put pressure fast enough, your safe leaner will die as a result of your lack of movement. Because often the safe laner is the, the major target of ganks. Okay, so if you don't bring the attention away from them, your safe laner dies. It is a very, very common trend in games. So I get gone on here. I think because I'm Death Prophet, we turn it around. We end up killing off their Caudal here. I think we end up taking, almost taking the mid tower. Yeah, we take the mid tower. They dive our Ember bottom, which was like, whatever. You know, they lose their mid tower for it. And so we're pretty happy with this, right? We get the most important tower of the game. We've opened up the map now. And uh, at this point, all I need to do is slow down the pace of the game, right? And this is where, once again, a lot of people mess up. This is the main time of the game where Death Prophet players have no idea what to do. I'm going to answer this question here for you right now. After you get this mid tower, which I didn't just barrel into, I didn't just kill myself. I waited for heroes to show bottom. I waited for my teammates to show up. Until then, I was just kind of comfortable with clearing the small camp, clearing the wave, buying clarities, and just vibing, right? You don't have to go crazy. Okay, if you kill yourself in pubs, that's not so good because your teammates will also kill themselves. So what do I do? Now I go bottom. What I'm looking to do is kind of take what I would say is almost the worst possible farm on the map. And the reason why, or the reason why I want to do this is because I don't want to take away the safe farm because I can take the dangerous farm. I have 1600 HP. I have two spirit siphon charges. I have a ton of movement speed. I don't need to take mid. I don't need to take this, right? Right. This is like really far away. So what do I do? This is, this is something I've been uh, theory crafting a little bit. Uh, I've seen some pros do it. I've been doing it a couple times. I don't know where the enemy team exactly is right now, but if I go back 20 seconds, I can assume they're where? I can assume they're probably on the bot side of the map. Why? Because I see two heroes that TP mid. They kind of like shift out through mid. Wraith King's bottom. Uh, I saw the Shadow Demon bottom, so I kind of know they're like mid slash bottom, right? And if they were to smoke gank someone, it's probably going to be me. Why? Because I'm the closest or it will be the Tusk, right? It's going to be one of those two. And so what I do is actually just keep the lane back here. And the reason why I do this is twofold. Number one, I don't really want to flash farm. Like, I'm not going to go kill this and then kill this. Like, I could, but I don't really have the mana to do that. It's pretty mana intensive. It's slow. So instead, by not pushing the wave up, I forced the Pango to show uh, really far up on our map, which isn't necessarily bad for him because he could collapse on mid. I think, like, potentially the downside of the play I'm making is he can clear this wave run up and collapse on mid, which is, I think, the reason why pros might advocate against what I'm doing. But hopefully this all kind of makes sense. This is some like advanced stuff that hopefully makes some sense now that I'm explaining it. See, it's even something I'm still like learning about and, and working on and have been implementing into my own gameplay. But yeah, I, I think I ended up shoving in the wave eventually. I like half shoved it in. I didn't fully shove it in. Um, ended up kicking the pango out here. He was out of mana. But once I realized that, okay, you know, I, I, my X was starting to come back up, I wanted to shove out the lane as far as I can. And this is what I'm doing. I'm not I'm not just staticking the wave for like eight minutes straight. <laughs> I'm looking to clear it after. Uh, basically, I'm looking to clear it when my X is coming up, because now the X is up and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty strong. I'm now going to look to eventually reconvene with my team or reconnect with my team. Um, and so that's exactly what happens. There you go. Right. I'm clearing bottom. I wouldn't have TP to this without EXO, most likely. I'm not going to lie. Like if I don't have EXO and this breaks out, it's like it's a little bit too far away from the tower where there's a decent chance they might the fight might be over by the time I get there. And then I'm giving up an entire lane of farm, which is super game losing and is a common play that your average player makes like every single game at some point or another, uh, multiple times, actually, usually. But here with with EXO and the fight seemingly lasting, I go in. You might notice that I don't even instantly EXO here. And the reason why is I was very afraid that I would EXO and then nothing else would come out of it. And so I do not EXO. 
I kill off the Shadow Demon with just some autos, which is why I love Phase Boots Winley so much, man. I love this item build so much because as I replay this, I don't easily chase this guy down unless I have a severe movement speed advantage on him, but I do, so I get the kill. I actually can, uh, I think I have level two Exo now if I wanted it. Yeah, I do. Take a little bit too long to skill it up, to be honest, but yeah, it's just a clean fight. Didn't have to burn my Exo, and that was kind of a good realization on my part that I did not need it. Uh, and yeah, that was that was really, really nice. And I had shoved out bottom previews to that. So all of a sudden, because of a good decision to not instantly TP, not instantly go mid, not instantly go top, my CS is actually the highest on my team. My net worth is the highest on my team. And this is without taking away farm from my teammates. That's why people are like, I'm the offlane player. Speed, you just take all your safe laners farm. You take your mid laners farm. That's how you get so farmed as an offlaner. It's like, <laughs> okay, man. All right, stay 3K, brother. You know what I mean? Like, Instead, now I have this Exo for Roche. Okay, the reason why we Roche here is we have Avenge, we have a we have a Tusk, uh, we have level two Exo. Right, main thing here is I have level two Exo BKB. This is your spike. Like this is one of your major spikes of the game. Your hero is pretty freaking nasty at this point in the game, uh, because if you don't know why, your spirits double. Like this this the scaling on your Exo is stupid. Like it's stupid. It just doubles at level twelve. Like most ultis do not double at level 12, especially if there's some like game winning ulti, right? Uh, what I mean by that is like, I don't know, like Pango roll. It's not gonna double in damage and then double in stun duration or something like that. Or like Mars Arena, it's one, It's not gonna double. Like most things just, I don't know if that makes sense. And so essentially the scaling on DP ulti is good and I might be KB. So the fight, uh, we get the Roshan, I have the Exo going. They decide to fight us and it's really important that I react early with the BKB here. And the reason why is because I understand that this guy does quite a bit of damage to me. Uh, he, I thought he had Desso. I'm actually surprised he didn't have Desso, but he's a physical damage rate king. Your armor isn't the best, and so you can get taken out. But I pop my BKB here, get the two-man Spirit Siphon. I'm going to heal like crazy. Three-man three Spirit Siphon, three-man Silence, and the fight is just a complete wash. I'll go back just to show you this. This is, you know, just a very clean sequence. I see the stun being thrown at me. Once I identify that a, a stun is going to be thrown at me, I pop my BKB. The main stuns I have to worry about is a chain stun from Pango. It's stun from Mars and a stun from Wraith King. So I actually do have to pop BKB early into these team fights. Some team fights you pop it late, some you pop it early. This game, I'm generally going to have to pop it early and just secure some sort of kill onto a Wraith King first life or a Mars. And yeah, it's just a complete disaster on the enemy team. I think it was a really bad decision for them to fight into a level 2 Exo and into my BKB. I, I guess they didn't know I had BKB. They probably didn't. I hadn't shown it yet. But at the end of the day, I get a triple kill. I get an ultra kill. And yo boy speed, you know what it is. Just kidding, I didn't get the rampage. <laughs> I was like, dude, you stole my kill, man. Oh my god, that's when you break your items, guys. If anyone ever steals a rampage, just break your items. It's it's honestly unacceptable. Don't let people think that they can do that, right? Unacceptable. So as the game progresses here, I, I now go for a Kaya. Um, the reason why I go for a Kaya in this game is because if I'm having a really good game and I can get to my level 15 Crypt Swarm talent, that's when you can flash farm because you can basically shove out waves without being in like a dangerous position for a long period of time. Basically, what I mean by that is in Dota, the longer you have to show on a wave, the more likely you are to die, right? That is like kind of just how this game plays out. Um, and so, yeah, when you have this 15 talent, you can't sustain it without a Kaya. It's just like, I, I there's no other way to, I don't think there's another item that lets you properly sustain this Crypt Storm talent in a way that lets you farm. You could take it anyway, because it's like kind of just good in team fights. It does a lot of damage, but I love, and I mean love, going Kaya uh, on this hero if, if I can get away with it. The, the reason why I say get away with it is DP wants to run in. Kaya doesn't enable that at all. And so it really has to mean that you're slowing down the pace of the game a little bit and you're playing for a slightly later timing where you find that the BKB is enough or you're just so far ahead where you don't think you can really die, which I personally thought was the case, even though I end up dying in a second here. Um, team ended up taking a fight. I personally just didn't want to take this fight. I remember they, they flamed me for this. <laughs> I was like, eh, my ex was kind of running out. I'd rather just pressure this tower a little bit. But we ended up, uh, you know, dying here. I tried to BKB TP. I did it too late. So unfortunately, I ended up going down right at the last second. That was a pretty big feed, honestly. That, if anything could have thrown the game on, on my personal end, it would have been that. All right, this next play is just me griefing. <laughs> I was like debating whether or not I'd cover it. But I think it's good that I do. So main mistake I make here is my Void's down for 12. I don't have XO. Like, it's just a meh-ass fight. You know what I mean? 
I don't have teammates. I don't have stuns. I don't know. I don't even know why I went in. Honestly, this is like such a classic pub play. Uh, it's just like you guys, you got to watch your mini map, you know, and same thing for me here. I just I, I was not paying attention, close enough attention to how the fight was developing. Clearly, the answer to that question is was poorly, very poorly. <laughs> um but it, it's it's all right like you can't really stress too much you know what i mean it, 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 when you make plays like that a lot of the players will get very tilted you just got to move on all right next up we got our biggest team fight of the game seven thousand gold behind game not looking too great here right we're definitely in a position to lose however let's get into it nonetheless so i think our void ends up going down right at the beginning of the fight so you're gonna think oh this must be a disaster but don't worry, I'm playing Death Prophet. My team also gets a really big pickoff onto the Coddle. The Void nearly killed Pango alone, so he kind of just died. And at this point in the game, all I had to do was not pop my BKB too early. The main reason why is I'm paying attention to the stuns. And this is something that's really hard to do, but it is a very important skill in gaining MMR. I know that, well, there's a couple things to know. I know this guy doesn't have a BKB, so if I silence him, I'm not getting stunned unless Shadow Demon purges him, but he doesn't have a shard. So I'm not going to get stunned by Wraith King. Okay, Mars is on the side. Pango just bought back, but he's the only other stun. And so I know I'm not getting stunned. And so I can hold my BKB. And because I hold my BKB on the first life, now I pop it here. And honestly, maybe I didn't have to. But the point is, is like in my head, what I'm thinking here is, okay, whatever slow stun, whatever could come out that would stop me from killing this guy would potentially cause us to lose the fight. So instead, I just want to confidently pop my BKB on that guy take him out, and then, <laughs> look at this poor Marsh, he's like, oh, this shit is so stupid, look at this DVR, <laughs> I don't know, it's so crazy, dude, look at this, like, look at this shadow to me, it's like full HP, he tries to hide into here, but I don't know why these things hit from out of vision, like, they, that, that should be the nerf in the next patch, they should not hit heroes that are out of vision, I have no idea why it, it's like that, but, uh, yeah, easy, after that, I instantly shove out the bottom wave, uh, I think I cleared two waves here, as I talked about, when you have the Crypt Storm talent, you really want to start to farm. I stacked the large camp. I killed the small camp. I'm really looking to like play for timings. You know what I mean? I'm looking to flash farm. I'm not looking to just be some space creating offlaner. And, and you have to determine not. I don't play every DP game like this because sometimes I won't have a great lane. I had a good lane this game. It wasn't great, but it was good. I had a good lane, two ultra kills. You know what I mean? I, I have a game where I want to itemize and I want to play to carry the game, right? I, I'm kind of I've taken the responsibility of essentially being our, our mega core, and that's totally okay as Death Prophet. And I think that's very important to understand as a player, that just because you're offlane doesn't mean you're, you're locked into a role. You might be like, but Speed, I don't play Death Prophet. I'm a Mars player. It's like, you can do this on Mars. You can do this on Tide. You can do this on Pango. There's plenty of builds that you can, you know, go that orientate uh, more towards scaling than farming uh, or fighting, I mean. The fighting build I usually go on DP is BQB in a blink, right? Uh, but that's not what I go this game. I go a much more farming build and YOLO in build in the Kaya and Sanj. So, all right, next fight breaks out. I think I didn't want to exo right away. I ended up getting caught by a two-man spear here, but it just doesn't matter, which is kind of why I like the Kaya Sanj build. The status resist is so great, right? Because uh, it's it's very unlikely I'm going to get chain stunned, but get it put into a little bit of a weird spot here. You know, your boy speed with the uh, walk into the chrono play. It's always a classic. But doesn't matter too much. I think I was just a little bit too tanky at this point in the game. I had the spider legs, which is such a great item on DP. The ability to kite out and kite in is fantastic. And one thing you can do as well that I do here is if I have three to four spear siphon charges and I'm half HP or below, I'll just siphon a, a large creep. It does give you a decent amount of health. I think I get like two, three hundred health here. And that could be the difference between me getting bursted or not. So usually you don't want to do that because then obviously you can't use them on a hero and it's a long cooldown. But in some circumstances, if you're afraid of getting bursted, you can absolutely do it. So at this point in the game, we were looking to go high ground. The enemy team was trying to force us back top, but our push was a little bit too fast for them because we had them maxed out EXO. So what I'm mainly looking to do on this high ground push is, you know, not go too crazy. The EXO, as long as I stay centralized to the racks, is going to take down the buildings. However, there is one common circumstance that like always comes up if you're if you're sieging as as DP, you have to understand that if you decide to siege, that means you're not using it to team fight, right? And so you have to tell your team to back off on the end of EXO. Otherwise, you're going to fight without EXO, and that's pretty trash. So we still have EXO up here, so I don't mean I don't mind going in. I'm just like literally insta destroying this Mars. <laughs> it's insane. Like, right? Isn't that crazy? Look how much damage I did to this guy in like a quarter of a second with nothing, right? It was like one spirit siphon and then just EXO going. He walks up to me. I don't know why he walked up to me. That was stupid on his part. But 
you know, I, I literally just boom, his health is just gone. All right, same thing with this Wraith King. He just gets evaporated by a little bit of Spirit Siphon. And But now I had to tell my team like, hey guys, chill, right? And I have no problem backing off. It might seem crazy. It's like, Speed, you have BKB and why, you know, why are you, why are you even considering the idea of disengaging? I think we end up killing off Mars and Pango here. So I didn't disengage right away. To be fair, when I did have this, this BKB, I, I, I actually did decide to stay and now I'm looking back at it. But once things look pretty bad, once like Ember dies and Venge dies, I pretty confidently just walk away, right? Even though my Void kind of like inched back forward, <laughs> I just hit the Disengage and we're looking to now farm up our level 25, which is just more Exo Spirits. It's another point in the Exo. They're, they're honestly both very good talents. I'll quickly talk about my talent choices as well. At level 10, I took Magic Resist. It's, they just had a lot of magic damage. You know, I, I, it's just, I don't want to get bursted. I feel like 30 damage is only good if you buy treads, to be honest. I think if you buy treads, you can go 30 damage. Otherwise, I personally don't take 30 damage. At level 15, Crypt Storm Talent, I explain that. If I buy a Kai and I'm snowballing, I take that talent. Or if I just don't think the max health Spirit Siphon is that good that game, maybe they have low HP heroes, it's not as useful. At level 20, this is where I just determine if I think I'm going to get bursted or not. I personally felt that there was like a low chance based on the fact that my team had plenty of initiators that I would get bursted or have to even go in first at this point. And so I wanted to play a much more like disruption slash like chase people down DP. And so I really like the movement speed slow spirit siphon. It, it's extremely noticeable. If you don't play this hero a lot, it, it might not seem that good. But honestly, it's very noticeable because none of your other abilities slow. They don't, right? You have no slow. So I do have a Shiva's now, which helps. But right, like in the, the combination of these things, you'll see when I hit these hit people with like the combination of these items, it really does chunk their movement speed like it really helps. Even for these right clickers that chase you, it just kind of crushes their movement speed, right? This guy's affected by time dilate and spirit siphon. He's at 287 movement speed with active phase boots. So it, it really is just a good kite out item. It kind of helps keep you alive as well, which it makes it sort of a health talent in and of itself. Just the thing is you take health if you think you're going to potentially die from full is, is personally how I see it. All right, I'm getting to our last play of the game. This one was pretty crazy. <laughs> My friend Yamsen decides to Tell me to buy back. I was like, dude, this is a throw, dude. I'm like, what are we doing? They have two heroes respawning in like a minute or less. We didn't even kill off two of their cores. I think we don't even end up killing this Pango after this Chrono. So we don't have Chrono. We don't kill the Pango. They're, <laughs> the only reason why we did this, and we have two teammates did, dead. Uh, the only reason why we do this is because <laughs> the Wraith King die backed. So I was like, all right, YOLO. So we take two racks. I think we, do we end up getting Megas here? I think we end up getting Megas. I almost died from full here. I literally almost died from full HP. This was pretty scary. Just at the last second, my Tusk managed to get off the Snowball, which was freaking huge. I was like, holy, we actually lost because this guy bought a Refresher. So he stunned me into another stun. I was like, this is unbelievable. I'm, we actually lost. But during the Snowball, my my ulti spirits came back to me and they heal you. Uh, they heal you in proportion to the damage dealt. Right, so I must have dealt a decent amount of damage because it full healed me and now I'm just vibing. They probably thought when I was going to come out, they could finish me off. Joke's on them. I'm full HP. <laughs> Joke's on you, kiddos. I'm full HP and Pango dies. We end up getting Megas. I think I hit top and Void gets bottom and I disengage. At this point, I just knew I had to not die back to lose the game. So this game ends up going for another like 10, 15 minutes. Um, basically, they kept trying. They actually bought some rapiers. I'll... I'll go into the last fight here. So I did end up buying the blink. The reason why is I felt like I wanted to just try to kill off the Shadow Demon and the Coddle. Neither of them bought a defensive item or like a like a major defensive item or hat. I mean, he has a four staff, I guess, but like they didn't have anything to really, really protect themselves. So I felt pretty strongly on the idea that, you know, blink Shivas is really good because you blink, you click your Shivas, gives you vision, slows them down. I siphon them and I can kill off the supports. This was my idea with, with this item. I ended up buying a Hex last item, which was great as well reason why is we kind of lack like a good stun late game outside of chrono which you can't chrono everybody so yeah all right let's get into our last team fight of the game hopefully you guys enjoyed this super in-depth analysis if you enjoy these types of videos you like these long form uh super in-depth replay analysis let me know right make sure you comment make sure you like the video make sure you support the video uh you can even share the video whatever you know whatever you can do because they're a bit more time intensive to make right of course but I'm happy to do them if you guys really feel like you're learning a lot from them. And yeah, I could do them for a variety of heroes. Death Prophet's just in the meta, and this was a game I played that I felt I played very well in, so I want to cover it. But all right, getting into the last team fight of the game, 
You can see my item build really comes into, you know, clear play here. I, I could arguably like try to hex the Pango, but he has, I don't know, I, I, I guess I, the main hex target for me actually should be Mars, which I don't think I had in the back of my head. I, I could have arguably looked at the hex the Mars, but end up going on the Caudal here. Unfortunately, he did have an disc, which made it pretty hard to burst him. But immediately, like, this is why I love this build so much. This like Shiva's Blink BKB. You're just so disruptive on the on the back line. You can be so confident with the movement speed slow on the Spirit Siphon, the Shivas. You just slow everyone to a crawl. This Wraith King can't get on top of me right away. So I can kite him quite conveniently. And then I get off. I, I should have been much faster on the Spirit Siphons. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty slow. I should have siphoned the Wraith King like 10 times earlier. But he just doesn't do any damage to me. He gets feared because I have a decent amount of armor now. And I mean, he had a Raper. How did he? Why was he doing so little to that's actually wild. Why did he hit me for so little? I guess with the Shivas, I have like 22 armor after Deso and AC. But I don't know. It just felt like he didn't do that much. That crit like tickled. And then I full heal after he hits me because, <laughs> you know, I'm balanced. We're balanced. I kept getting Spirit Siphon, but it just didn't. I don't know. It just didn't matter. And I had a Flicker as well, which is that's another thing. I, I This vessel was like a little annoying. It had like a lot of mini slows as well from like Coddle W uh to uh pango defusal to wraith king ulti just like a lot of these little annoyances but most importantly was was the um the spear vessel and so the flicker is just great and top of that movement speed is just the dp stat like you love movement speed on this hero we love movement speed the wind lace from earlier the phase boots i had the spider legs earlier you know we're all about the move speed but all right that's gonna be all hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did smash the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one peace and that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.